This is just a quick tutorial on how to build a common mode choke out of a FT240-43, FT240-43 toroid and a piece of coax. So this is RG8X. This would be better with RG58, which would be a little smaller. However, this slightly bigger coax will fit the toroid and it actually will hold a little bit more power as well. So the way that I do this and the way that it's kind of the common method of doing this is what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to start by pulling the coax through and measure off measure off a couple feet. I like to do about three and a half feet just to make sure I don't run out. Right about there. That's about three and a half feet of coax. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie wrap that to the toroid. Just using a garden variety plastic wire tie or a zip tie. Now this is going to be a crossover choke, so actually I'm going to change that over and do this side first. Basically what you do is you want to put six turns on one side, then we're going to cross over, and then we're going to come back and do six turns on the other side. And the only requirement is that you have the same number of turns on each side, and where you go a certain direction on this side, you're going to you're going to flip it and go the other opposite direction on this side. So for instance, here, this is going to be starting out counterclockwise, six turns. Then I'm going to bring it through. And then this side's going to be clockwise, six turns. And then we'll exit the other side. So you have to use stranded coax for this. If you try and do it with solid, it's not going to work. You'll damage the coax. You also have to keep these windings very tight up against the toroid. And when you're counting turns, you count every time it goes through the center of the toroid. So there's one, two, three, and there is four, and that makes five, one more, and that is six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come over. And now you notice that we're going clockwise. So these are six turns counterclockwise. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. This last turn, you count that as a turn because it's going through the center, but it's the first turn of our counterclockwise winding, or clockwise, I should say. It's the first turn of our clockwise winding. So we have one, two, three, and four. Five, and last but not least, six. And I'm just going to verify. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six turns in the counterclockwise direction. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and one too many. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six through the center, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. These turns are counterclockwise, these turns are clockwise. And we'll anchor that with another zip tie. Make sure it's nice and tight. And there you have it. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And what we'll do is we'll just trim this a little shorter and we'll put a PL259 on the end of this and this will go onto the bottom of our ballon box like so. So you need both of these because this gives us common mode suppression and this gives us 4 to 1 transformation. So this will prevent common mode current from going down the outside of the coax shield but it's still a 1 to 1 transformer. Really it's just a choke but it does help balance the current coming out of the, the coax. And then it goes into the 4 to 1 and we get our 4 to 1 impedance transformation out of here. So we'll go in at 50 ohms and then we come out to our antenna which is an off-center fed dipole at 200 ohms. And it's basically that simple. I like these because although you can cut this and put a PL259 on the end of it in a barrel connector so this is removable. I don't like doing that because this has no nicks, there's no way wider can get into this assembly at all. So it's more weather tight. And then you can also put it in the same box as the 4 to 1 transformer and I have done them that way in the past but I don't like to do them that way because there will be some interaction between these if they're right next to each other. So I prefer to do it with this taped to the outside of the mast. And then we'll feed it in here to our ballon box that's bolted to the top of that mast.